According to St. Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Many, five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to you. Be with you today. This is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. It's also the Sunday after Election Day, uh, at least as we are making this particular video. Not all the votes have been tallied, and even after they are tallied, there's a really good possibility there'll be some disputes, um, which will end up in the court system. So I think uh, we won't have actually final results for a while longer. We're going to have to wait to get those. If you're a little older than 30 years old, perhaps you remember uh, Gore v. Bush and how the 2000 election took quite a long time to, to settle out. Um, it's happened before, folks. It's not a surprise. We have an electoral system, or excuse me, an election system in the United States where the states make certain laws and then counties have certain practices and there's a certain amount of flux with the counties and the states. And so even if almost all the votes are in, it's not actually done until all the votes are in. Absolutely all legal votes have been tallied. So we'll see. I, uh, I tell you, just don't let it get to you. God, will know, God already knows who won, and God's okay with that. Not only that, he's going to make us survive through all of this if we follow in his path. So whatever the results are, God is with us. And so don't, let, don't be too anxious about what's going to happen. It'll all sort itself out, I think, in the end. Our gospel message today is about some, some very unusual practice of uh, marriages. In Jesus' day, uh, marriages did not happen in one day. Uh, a marriage feast would take several days. And over the course of several days, things would have to happen. Uh, people would have to buy food and prepare it. People would need to get dressed and be prepared. Sometimes there was a distance involved, so the bridegroom might have to come a distance to be with the bridesmaids and ultimately uh, begin the wedding feast. And so there's, there's delays inherent in the marriage uh, feast and in the wedding system in Jesus' day. What we hear in this particular uh, parable is that there are ten bridesmaids who have... Um, lamps and some of five of the the bridesmaids have lamps that have oil in them and five have lamps that don't seem to have very much oil in them apparently some of the bridesmaids thought that the bridegroom would appear almost instantaneously but he's late he's delayed we have no idea why but for some reason the bridegroom is delayed 
And so ultimately at midnight, we hear that um, it's announced that the bridegroom is uh, about to appear, that we should come out and meet him. And so there are five well-prepared bridesmaids who have lamps that have oil, and there are five bridesmaids who have lamps which really don't have enough oil. And so they, they appear unprepared. And so when they ask for oil, they're told, no, sorry, we can't share our oil with you, then none of us will have enough oil. You should go out to the vendors, you should go out to the merchants and buy oil for yourself at midnight. Oh yes, try that in Galilee on a Tuesday night. That doesn't work very well. Not a lot of convenience stores in Jesus' day. And so they're late, they're just simply late. Five bridesmaids are prepared, their, their, their lamps have enough oil, they move on to the wedding feast, and five find themselves knocking at the door, Lord, open to us. And they are told, sadly, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. The parable ends with these words, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The implication is that we need to be prepared for the coming of our Lord. In a few weeks we'll begin Advent, and Advent is a time not only to look forward to celebrating our Lord's birth, but also to prepare ourselves for Christ's coming again, His second coming. And this idea about being prepared is an important part of being a Christian. When I worked for the railroad, when I worked for Conrail so many years ago, I was in management and we were always told to have a suitcase filled with our clothes and all our necessities near the door because you never knew when you were going to get a phone call by the corporation that you needed to be in Altoona or Reading or uh, somewhere further north, Corning, New York, one of, one of our offices there. You never knew when you were going to get a call to be there. If you were in management, there might be a strike or some sort of disaster and they might say, we need you in this city. We need you in this city within a few hours. And so being prepared is part of that. It was part of, of being uh, a member of the, the management team. Life is full of delays. If you've been in the military, you recognize this idea of hurry up and wait. There are things that you have to hurry up for. And then there are long periods of time when you have to wait. And we have a hard time waiting. We've had a hard time waiting our way through COVID-19. Golly gee, here we are in November. We've been doing this for the most part since March. We've made more videos than anyone could have dreamed of. And we will continue to make those videos because we know they're, they're necessary and helpful and a blessing. But it's hard waiting. We would like, we would like to, to begin our lives again. The lives that we had before COVID-19 came and interrupted them. We would like to have a Thanksgiving like we use, usually have. We'd like to have a Christmas like we usually have. But there's a really good possibility that we're going to have to do some special things this year and maybe observe those very important family holidays in a very different way. We have to be prepared. We have to be able to deal with delays. We have to be patient when it's hard to be patient and to be thoughtful when our our level of frustration just seems way too high. It's not easy being a human being, and it's not easy following Jesus Christ. But there are blessings for us if we're able to, to struggle and follow in his path. Let's find ways to continue to deal with our difficulties, especially delays and frustrations in this life. Let's find ways not to shout at our neighbors or to kick the dog, or to, to argue with our spouse and get loud. Let's find ways to reach out with love, even when it seems really difficult to reach out with love. Even as they're continuing to count ballots, let us reach out with love for people who probably canceled out our vote by their vote. We're all one family in Christ Jesus. We're all made in the image and likeness of Christ. Let's find ways to love each other, especially during this difficult time. And as we move further on, there is light at the end of the tunnel, even though this is a long tunnel. We will come to the end of this one day, and then we will all say, thanks be to God. Amen.
Thanks be to God.